Well, I'll, I read the whole thing and I read it twice and candidly, it was an outstanding piece and I think, uh, I think Vladimir Putin made a better case against U.S. strikes in Syria than the President of the United States did last night to Greta. Uh, and I think he laid out one of the real dangers here, which is that jihadists and terrorists, as well as the al-Qaeda folks inside Syria and others, they're pouring in from the West and Russia. And if the Assad regime falls, in whose hands do these chemical weapons go? I mean, I don't think Assad is any threat to use chemical weapons against the United States or Israel. As for some of the people in the rebel community, I think they are a real threat to use them. You know, though, Pat, I mean, that when you talk about the chemical weapons and the whole idea that what President Putin has proposed is that, that, that Syria secure, hand over the chemical weapons to the international community and then they be dismantled. That, of course, though, I mean, how in the world are we ever going to be certain that Syria is identifying all its stockpiles? Well, we're not going to be, but I'll tell you this, Greta. Russia is the player here. It is the big player, not the United States. Russia alone has the lines to Assad. Russia alone can get Assad to identify where the weapons are. He alone can get Assad to, you know, to tell him where to go to pick up the weapons. We don't have any contact there at all. So for the short term, I think we got to rely upon Russia. You know, uh, Ms. Albright once said the United States is the indispensable nation. For the next couple of weeks in dealing with this crisis and resolving it, Russia is the indispensable nation. What, what do you make of the fact that in the, in the in part of the op-ed by President Putin, he talks about, about the president's address to the nation Tuesday night, but he also goes into he, the president's remark about American exceptionalism, say, stating that the United States policy is what makes America different. It's what makes us exceptional. That's what President Obama said. And then President Putin says that remark by our president is extremely dangerous to encourage people to see themselves as exceptional, whatever the motivation. Well, I disagree with President Putin here because I don't think that uh, President Obama said we are exceptional because of our policies. I think he said that he feels that our beliefs, our concern about international norms, our concern about human rights, the record we have makes us exceptional. So I don't agree with President Putin there. I do agree the United States is in many ways an exceptional nation. But President Putin makes a point. He asks this exceptional nation idea has taken us into war against Iraq, war in Afghanistan, 10 years, war in Libya, and now we're moving toward a war in Syria. What good has it done for human rights and what good has it done for the United States of America? And he, Putin is making a case here, Greta, that an awful lot of American critics of the administration, conservative as well as liberal, have been making. Well, what the Putin does is he uh, rubs the, his, the uh, U.S.'s nose in a Iraq and Afghanistan in this op-ed. It says something to the effect is why the government want to repeat recent mistakes, referring to Iraq and Afghanistan, identifying them. But, Pat, let me, I mean, do you, mm -hmm. what do you make of the idea that President Putin is trying to end run the, uh, the President of the United States, end run sort of private diplomacy, his foreign minister is supposed to be speaking privately with our Secretary of State, and at the same time, he goes out and speaks to the American people by this op-ed. Well, look, I mean, the Russians have their own interests. But I'll tell you this, what Putin is doing here, he is reaching out to the anti-war community in the United States, the anti-interventionist community on Syria, which, as we know recently, is probably up around 60, 70, 80 percent of the American people. And he's doing it in an op-ed. And I think it's very effective. But as for the Russians, do they have national interests in there? Yes, they do. Some of them coincide with us, which is that al-Qaeda not get these chemical weapons. Others don't. I mean, he wants Assad to survive. He doesn't want a war on Iran. Uh, he doesn't want these, these terrorists coming out into Chechnya any more than he wants them coming to New York. So we have interests in common with this man. Let me say this, uh, Greta. I work with Richard Nixon and with Ronald Reagan. When I was with Ronald Reagan, he was desperate to get to talk to the Russians. He would tell me, Pat, I keep trying to talk to him, and they keep dying on me. They had about three or four of them die. And then he had Gorbachev, and he went right for Gorbachev because he wanted to negotiate with you. What is the United States doing stiffing the president of Russia, not having meetings with him? I think it makes us look petty. I think, frankly, in the last week, Vladimir Putin has looked like a statesman.
Well, I mean, it's the irony of, again, back to my first question, the fact that the former head of the KGB <laughs> and, uh, and what the KBG did for decades is now lecturing our president via the New York Times to the American people on issues of peace and diplomacy um, and to a president who who ran on uh, a anti-war platform right. is an extraordinary but, but, turn of events. But which of the two, Greta, is right now threatening a war that the American people don't want, that the mil American military doesn't want, that the Congress of the United States doesn't want, that the world community doesn't want? The one threatening the war right now is John Kerry and Barack Obama, who says we're going to have a big strike Whereas, you know, John Kerry says it's going to be unbelievably small. But they're the ones to whom Putin is addressing this. And I certainly think it is far better in our relationship with Russia that we have the Russians, you know, writing op-eds for the New York Times rather than putting missiles in Cuba as they were doing when I was very young.